light of the world. Deliverer. Sanctuary. Honest. All powerful. My strong deliverer. Living bread. Dependable. Savior of the world. Hope of Israel. All present. My support. Lord of glory. Dwelling place. Self existent. Horn of salvation. Welcome back to the show. Quick announcement, uh, Kamal Saleem, former PLO terrorist, will be live in the studio April 28th and 29th. Make sure that you stay tuned for that. Also, we have a special Exposing Atheism show coming on May 7th and May 8th. Mark your calendars for that. Uh, we have about less than 30 minutes left on the show, so we will go right to our next question. David, you ready? All right. Since Allah deceived people about Jesus, and since he couldn't protect the rest of Jesus' message, what did Jesus ultimately accomplish? Allah couldn't protect the message of Jesus. Remember that even according to Islam, uh, Allah helped corrupt the message of Jesus by influencing people and, and convincing them that Jesus died on the cross. Uh, and when people like the Apostle Paul came and corrupted Islam, according to what Muslims tell me, uh, Allah just couldn't protect that message. Uh, so, the question is, what did Jesus really accomplish according to Islam? Muslims, call in and tell me, what did Jesus get done? What did he ultimately accomplish? If you're a Muslim, you have to say he didn't accomplish anything. You might say he preached for 33 years, but what did he do that lasted? He didn't do anything that lasted. The only two sorts of people who are, who are around later in the first century are people who are rejecting him. They're guilty of rejecting one of Allah's messengers or people who are bowing down, calling him Lord, and saying he died on the cross for their sins. They're guilty of uh, believing in a corrupt version of what Jesus told them. But we don't have anyone later in the first century, after Allah tricked everyone into believing that Jesus died on the cross, we don't have anyone who's believing in the pure message of Jesus. So what did Jesus accomplish? No matter what Jesus did during his life, Allah immediately came in and tricked people and corrupted the message. And then the Apostle Paul came in right after that, corrupted the message even more. And there's just nothing left of Jesus' work. Jesus' followers were committing shirk and calling him Lord and saying he died on the cross for their sins. And those who rejected Jesus, they, they were guilty too. So what you, what you have in Islam is, at the end of the day, you're telling me that Jesus, the word of Allah and a spirit from him, uh, who was born of a virgin, who lived the most miraculous life in history, who had a miraculous end to his life because he's raised to Allah, accomplished absolutely nothing and what you're really telling me is uh, Jesus did nothing so even though Muslims claim oh we have this high view of Jesus we really respect Jesus if you follow it through if you follow Islam's teachings about Jesus through to the logical conclusion you dishonor and disgrace Jesus by saying that he didn't do anything that lasted and you insult you insult a man you claim to believe in okay on May 1st we have Nick Vujicic founder of Life Without Limbs. He will be live in the studio. He was born without arms and legs, and he has a very special and a very powerful testimony to share with all of us. We will also open the lines up for you to call in with your questions for him. At this time, we have Brother Nazar on air with us. Welcome to the show, Nazar. Yeah, good afternoon, and may the, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank, Thank you, brother. Welcome to the show. And my, I, I want to uh, say something in this regard, what Muhammad's done for the uh, humanity. Mm -hmm. The reason he denied the crucifix uh, and the death of Christ, because if he has to prove that, that he has no business to come or to exist to be a prophet, because that's it. 
So that's why the Islam or the Torah or Muhammad himself denied the crucifixion and the death of Christ. And even though I, I'm sure uh, David, Mr. Wood knows exactly because he studied the Quran well, I, I understood from the way he talked about it, that there is so many verses in the Quran a proof that Christ has died and risen to heaven in the Quran. But I don't remember the, the, the verse or the surah. So what I'm trying to say, the Islam denied the death of Jesus Christ and resurrection because if they approve that, then Muhammad has no business to come. There is no more prophet. And Jesus says himself, there will come after me a liar prophet. So that's it. What can you say more than that for them? But they always tell a lies and... The, the, the Bible is corrupted and all that just to prove that their Muhammad is, is really a prophet, which he's actually, he's no prophet, in my, in my view. Thank you, Nazar. Thank you for calling. And uh, that's an interesting point. If, if, anyone, if anyone missed the point, what he's saying is Muhammad had to deny Jesus' death for sins. He had to. Because if he didn't deny this, then Jesus died on the cross for sins. His work was complete. When he said, it is finished, it was finished, what do you need another prophet coming along with another, uh, a different, another book and another revelation for? What do you need that? It would make that completely pointless and meaningless. So Muhammad had to deny the gospel. He had to deny Jesus' incarnation, his sacrificial death, and his resurrection. Because if Muhammad didn't deny these things, then his work is pointless. So our brother is pointing out that Muhammad had to deny uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is interesting because Christians, long before Muhammad came, were told what the gospel is. It's a message about Jesus' death on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, his claim to be divine. That's the core of the Christian gospel. And we're told false teachers are going to come and they're going to try to corrupt that message. They're going to, they're going to try and keep people from believing in that message. And then 600 years later, Muhammad comes along and he says, uh, hey, Christians, I can agree with you on a lot of things. We believe in one God just like you do. We believe that Jesus, uh, that Jesus performed miracles just like you do. We believe Jesus is the Messiah just like you do. But we have to reject Jesus' death on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, and his claim to be divine. Uh, certainly not surprising to Christians. We were expecting people like Muhammad uh, to come along. But the brother did say, uh, he did refer to passages in the Quran which seem to indicate that uh, Jesus did die. So in Surah 4, 157, it sounds like Jesus didn't die. Allah tricks everyone into believing that Jesus died. But you have other passages. Let me read to you uh, Shakir's translation. This is a Muslim. It's a Muslim translation of uh, Surah 5, verse 117. Most translations try to cover this up. Let's read how Shakir translates uh, Surah 5, verse 117. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, I did not say to them, anything save what you did enjoin me with. To serve Allah, my Lord and your Lord, and I was a witness of them so long as I was among them. But when thou didst cause me to die, thou wert the watcher over them, and thou art witness of all things. When thou didst cause me to die, when you brought an end to my earthly uh, life, uh, then you were with them. Well, wait a minute. Jesus didn't die, according to Surah 4, 157. And according to at least this translation, of Surah 5, 117, uh, Jesus did die. And even if you remember a passage we read earlier, when Jesus is born, he said, uh, peace on me on the day I was born, peace on me on the day that I die. Well, what do you mean here? So this 2.30 show that you're watching today is actually a trial run, a test run, for us to launch more afternoon shows on a consistent weekly basis. The purpose of these afternoon shows is to reach out to our international audience, whether in Pakistan, in India, in London, in the Netherlands, in Australia, in France, all over the world. People are calling us, emailing us, writing to us, letting us know that they enjoy watching Jesus or Muhammad. Our next step and our next goal is to take this show to Europe, launch a channel out in Europe. However, we need your support and we need your prayers so that we can financially uh, sustain the cost of this program so that we can afford to go overseas and broadcast the truth. Uh, David, why don't you sort of sum everything up for us, uh, what we've been talking about today. How does all of this compare with the Christian view? And, and, that, and that's, that's the key question, because Muslims are constantly 
uh, criticizing the Christian view, saying we've got problems, we're blaspheming, we're committing shirk, we've got problems, and they've got...